I would imagine it's probably like acting. If it's going well, there's probably nothing like it. But if it's not going well, you could happily crawl down a rat hole out of the way. It's, but thank God that that doesn't happen very often. And it's adrenaline. I would imagine like acting, singing, anybody that's performing to an, for, to an audience, if it goes well, it's, it's, it's magnificent. You know, you walk a foot above the ground, all this sort of thing. It, it is, it's wonderful. The auctioneers were always very friendly. Um, and they, everybody had their own secret little bidding way. As, as Dora said, my father-in-law used to catch hold of his collar and he sort of wave his thumb a little bit. Nobody could ever see that he was doing it, only the auctioneer. Pretty well everybody had their own particular style. Some winked, I don't, either a fairly obvious wink, or once you, once you picked the person up round the ring as a bidder, then you knew what to look for. So in other words, the wink might have got just a quick wink, like move a finger, uh, move the mouth, uh, nod, or shake the head if they didn't want to bid, but nod. Some people quite flamboyant about it, and, uh, but they're all, all sorts of different styles. But people used their own particular style. They, you, you knew how Mr. Jones was going to bid if he did bid. My very first auction, yes, I remember it very well. Um, it was in the sheep pens, and Danny Clifton, who was one of my bosses, one of the partners at the time, um, unbeknown to me, had spoken to the buyers and said, when we get halfway down the plank, I'm going to hand the, st the stick to Graham and tell him to sell the rest of the sheep. And he'd also told the vendor, who was a man called Mr. Jack Sevenoaks, and he said, do you mind if I let Graham sell your sheep? And Mr. Sevenoaks was extremely helpful. But of course, I knew nothing about this. Um, and when we were going down the plank, all of a sudden, Danny said to me, Great, Graham, you're selling the rest of the sheep. And I nearly died. But because he'd done his homework and spoken to the buyers, they bid up well, spoken to Mr. Sevenoaks, he knew what he wanted for his sheep. And so it was semi-successful. But that was my first effort of selling anything by auction. He used to he'd be on, on the pigs and he'd say, so to the, that man over, over there um, with a red face or something like that. And he wouldn't ask the man his name. It, uh, whoever was trying to book, he had to go and f find out who it was. Oh boy, ex-army guy, um, war wound, you know, very upright really, but hobbled a bit. Uh, couldn't manage very well. So he used to start to sail off and I was told that when he'd had enough, he would asked me to get up and finish the sail off. It was usually about 10 minutes before he had enough. Um, and I always reckon one of the reasons that he didn't want to go on too long was that every time he got off the end of a plank, a hip flask used to come out of his pocket and it <laughs> uh, to ease the pain, of course, for medicinal purposes only, but I'm sure it made him that much unsteadier, that much sooner to get up and down off the plank. And he used to say, come on boy, you ought to get up here now, and off he'd go and sit in the office. And, I used to dread finishing the auction because at the end of every auction, which were usually pretty successful, I have to say, he'd say, oh, well done, come on, that was a good, good sale, good sale, have a drop of this. And he'd pour me at least four fingers of neat scotch in the bottom of a glass. And I was probably only 17 at that stage. And I used to look at him, oh God, I just, I have to drink it to be sociable, but it's gonna kill me. <laughs> so it was um, great memories. He was a great character, fantastic. But he's not still here really, but uh, gone, long gone. The farmers would like Colin Manning, he was, because he was so popular, he was a very good auctioneer and he could always get that last pound out of the buyers and he did it in such a nice way. So then when I bid on them one day and the man said, uh, Colin, not down, Colin, Manning, Colin, Colin Manning said, the, the buyer is the lady in the pretty red dress. And of course all the farmers, there was very few ladies in those days, ever went to the pig market because they all turned round to look who was in the pretty red and white dress. Well, ladies didn't wear trousers in those days. <laughs> if there was a bereavement and a farmer died, um, Colin would always be extremely kind to the widow and, and the children and help them through a transition, perhaps, where the son was taken on the farm after his father died, and he was extremely good at that, yeah.
I started farming on my uh, on my own account when I was 19, and um, when I started to purchase and using the auctioneers um, in, in and around Hereford Market, um, they weren't known as Hereford Market auctioneers in those days. It was either Russell Baldwin Bright or Sunderland's or um, Sunderland Hammond. Um, but I quickly became known as surname farm name, so I was Price the Mill, and that has lasted all the way through my farming life up till today. And uh, as such, um, when I left the mill some 20 years ago, I'm still known as Price the Mill. Well, the old planks in the market, of course, because we were outside, um, were treacherous when it had rained and sometimes even frozen. And it was just like walking along a, skate, a skating rink. And what we used to do was get some salt and, and go along the plank. But of course, there was nothing that the buyers liked better than to see you slip off in, into a pen of sheep or whatever it may be. And sometimes if they were annoyed with you, they might even try and pull your trousers to see if they could pull you off there. Uh, the most magnificent animals, the pedigree Hereford, you know. And I remember that Mr. Gallimore used to do the auction for that. Yes, do you remember? Yes, yes, I yes, remember. He did, didn't he? Yes. It was wonderful. And when we moved from, from the old office to our new premises, there was a fantastic window that overlooked the square. And I used to go up and I used to watch these wonderful animals walking round. It was a magnificent sight.